Meet the Terazuki, a World War II era Japanese destroyer that hasn't been seen in 83 years. Using advanced remote operated vehicles and uncrewed ocean mapping drones, Ocean Exploration Trust's exploration vehicle Nautilus captured these haunting images of a wreck that's helping rewrite history. The discovery was made in what's called the Iron Bottom Sound, which earned its name as a result of several World War II battles that took place there, as well as the resulting shipwrecks and downed aircraft scattered around the ocean floor. Iron Bottom Sound and the Battle of Guadalcanal, the naval battle of Guadalcanal was one of the most substantial naval battles in maybe in, in in American naval history, not just World War II history. The EV Nautilus team has been exploring several known wrecks in the area while simultaneously looking for new ones with the help of these. Drix is a 25 foot long vessel that maps the sea floor using sonar. It's capable of mapping the underwater landscape up to 3,000 meters deep, but works best between 500 to 1,000 meters, all without a single person on board. Kind of people to refer to them as autonomous surface vehicles, but we, we like to call it uncrewed because despite uh, some very sophisticated technology on board, we still have a pilot sitting in a remote operating center that, that monitors it all the time. Drix's remote team can monitor numerous cameras and sensors on board from potentially hundreds of miles away. We started by calibrating it in a sense by going over some of the known wrecks and we saw just what a wreck looked like on the sonar system and then developed a few approaches to optimize the detection. The data gathered by Drix helps point the EV Nautilus and its crew to new sites of interest, which have the potential to unravel mysteries and stories lost lost long ago to the ocean's depths. At about 800 meters, the EV Nautilus crew encountered the wreck of the Terazuki for the first time. Again, we, we've had some some really nice discoveries. The uh, Terazuki was a very, very exciting one, but changed history what we found. When Drix data appears to show a potential wreck, the knowledge of what exactly has been found has to be put together piece by piece through further exploration. So we don't know what hazards there are. There are often fishing nets caught on wrecks, there are cables and things like that, and that's a very dangerous situation for the ROV. So we'll stay something like 50 meters off the bottom and use the sonar, but once we have that, the ROV pilots can very carefully plan their, their photogrammetry. First time, we didn't know it's Japanese or American, and then we, you know, look at evidence. Okay, look at the anchor, and then second Japanese, and then when we look at some, you know, feature, or how many turrets, or how many torpedo tubes there, and then, you know, okay, maybe this is my job. Japanese, you know, shipwreck. Eventually, you know, we found that this is a Terazuki, but it's like a layer of, you know, discovery, discovery, discovery. Due to the secrecy of the Japanese Navy during wartime, there are no known historical images of the Terazuki before it was sunk. The EV Nautilus, therefore, is sharing the first public images of this historic destroyer. A variety of ocean life forms can be seen making their home on its turrets, cracks and crevices. Any piece that sticks out, like the gun turret or the davit on the side that kind of sticks out into the current will really attract that marine growth. And they tend to be carls and anemones and little worm type things. No, it's crowds, <laughs> crowds on the To get a sense of what it looked like before it sank, we have to look at drawings by the U.S. Office of Naval Intelligence as well as this photo of the similar Akizuki destroyer. It was originally believed that the Terazuki sank when onboard depth charges, which are used for anti-submarine warfare, exploded. However, when the EV Nautilus discovered the Terazuki's depth charges intact along the ship's hull, it disproved this long-held theory. And also was something the EV Nautilus crew had to be careful of, since these charges can go off even after years at the bottom of the ocean. Chuck Hammerline, who's provided us a wealth of information, uh, sent me a note saying, you know, please be extra careful that some Japanese ordnance in this time of the war uh, had a reputation for being overly Agreed. sensitive. Very so stable, yeah. yeah. Which I'm sure 80 something years on the bottom of the ocean hasn't exactly uh, <laughs> improved too much. These depth charges also added an element of danger to the EV Nautilus crew's exploration. Ultimately, the discovery of this wreck proved it was American torpedoes that sank the Japanese destroyer. While the majority of the Terazuki crew survived, nine lost their lives. We occasionally, twice, had a situation where we've had a little uh, error in the fuel line and it goes and stops, and that's very scary when you have a several million dollar vehicle just floating around. Despite the development of new technologies making ocean exploration more effective and efficient, the team behind the EV Nautilus, its remote operated vehicles, and Drix still face challenges. Battery backups, a satellite internet connection, and a good old fashioned rescue mission come in handy when things don't go as planned. The team says it's looking into using its data to develop machine learning systems to help identify targets for exploration as well. We've got several exciting ocean stories coming up, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss them. 
And if you want to see our coverage of another famous shipwreck right now, you can check out our video on the Endurance, which was crushed in Antarctic ice over 100 years ago and found in unbelievably good condition. Thanks for watching as we continue to bring you all the stories that make you say, what the future.